getting real, getting honest with your money. Getting real and getting honest with your money. How do you get honest with your money? (laughs) A long time ago, I thought it was more important to portray the idea of having lots of money than to actually honestly feel that way for myself. And through a lot of introspection, a lot of looking inward, a lot of releasing of old stuff, a lot, a a lot of getting truthful with myself, getting in alignment with my money, understanding that my money is a mirror. It's not the only mirror we have in our lives, but it's definitely one powerful one because it's such a prevalent means of energy in the world we live in and function in. Um, A friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, gifted me a book by Ken Honda called Happy Money. And I had danced around this idea of my relationship with money for several years. And I've taken many different... T. Harvecker, uh, I started uh, creating more vessels, uh, more openings, more channels, I would say, for money. In the means, you know, in ways of opening more accounts and... um, I used to call them my flower pots, (laughs) having different flower pots and money in lots of different places and ways in which money could come into me. So that was T. Harv Eker. And I read Dave Ramsey's book about debt and managing debt. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki's uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, I mean, I have looked at money and thought about money lots of different ways. And what I, I, I came to realize and continue to realize is that the first thing that you have to do is admit to yourself that you may not be fully truthful. You may not be being fully truthful and fully honest with yourself about money. Nonetheless, everyone else in the world, <laughs> I'm talking about with yourself really taking a look at it and saying, what is it that I really need? What is it that I really want? Because the other thing that I've come more and more to realize for myself is that we need very little to actually feel wealthy. And it is a conditioning of your heart and it's a conditioning of your mind and your thoughts, your actions. But it really, it does, it starts with the heart and beginning to trust that it's the way in to a lot of beauty and a lot of much greater ease, really. And a feeling of wealth in your day-to-day life by getting really honest about your money, by looking at it and not being afraid of it. Some say, well, (laughs) I'm not afraid of my money. Mm, Really? Because even, and and it really, honestly, it is not a, a condition to be afraid of your money even if you don't have it. Meaning, some of the wealthiest people in the world walk around afraid every day about their money. They're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're waiting to lose it all. They're waiting to see who's going to take it from them. So, you can decide right now to feel like one of the wealthiest people 
if not the wealthiest people on the planet. And you can make that decision for yourself. And, and the way into that feeling and the way to the digits and the dollars in the bank account is getting real and getting honest with your money. Expressing what it is that you love about it, hate about it, fear about it, want around it. Really digging into your thoughts and beliefs around it from a small child, from the time you were a small kid, little kid, you know. Maybe you stole a candy bar because you didn't feel like you had the money and you really wanted that candy bar. Or you didn't, you didn't have the money, but you wanted that, so you took it. Um, maybe it's, you know, you heard money doesn't grow on trees, you know, or money comes to those who wait or money is bad. You know, wealthy people are bad. Money isn't spiritual. All those you know, and, and, and I mean, <laughs> money is a reflection of energy. And it is indeed a currency for which we exchange for other things. And it allows, it allows us to support our well-being through beautiful retreats or beauty in our homes or in our gardens, or being able to take care of an elderly parent medically in the way that we need to, um, offer a gift, give to a cause that we care deeply about. It's, it has all of those wonderful properties and capabilities. But those things come from us. And then the money is a mirror back to us. So getting real, getting honest with your money, having a conversation with your money, telling it what it is exactly that you want and need from it, making friends with it, making allies with it. Because if you push it over there and you look away and you shame yourself or are shameful around what you do have or don't have, if there's all that fear and sense of lack, feeling of lack and antagonistic relationship with your money, money will do exactly and be exactly what you want it to be. Meaning, if you are antagonistic with your money, money will be antagonistic with you. If you're dishonest with yourself and your family and your friends and you're trying to impress and spend your way through life to try and prove something to someone else outside of you and trying to prove to yourself your own worth instead of trusting in your own worth and believing it is regardless of what your bank accounts say. If you do that, money will reflect back to you those same things. It will be hard to get or hard to keep. It will feel like it is never enough. It will feel like it's got its hold on you because you're clinging onto it too tightly, afraid to lose it. So the, the, last, um, the last episode, we talked about money being your mirror and to soften, to soften your touch around money and soften your words and soften your heart and soften your thoughts. And in the softening of those thoughts and words and heart is the essence of realness, honest, honest to goodness, realization of where you're at with your money and not being afraid to look at where the bank accounts are at. And not being able to, you know, not being afraid to look at your bills. Look at your bills. Come to terms with them. Look at your accounts. Come to terms with them. 
agree that you're going to work in partnership to make it better, to allow it to be better, to realize it into being better. And I, I promise you, if you can get real and you can get honest, and in my experience, I can only speak from my own personal experience, in my personal experience, I couldn't get anywhere with my money until I could get honest with it. And I could look at it and sit with it and try to understand better why I would be with my money the way that I was. Until you can get honest with yourself about anything, certainly, but with money, money won't be honest with you. So it is your mirror. It is a reflection back to you. I, I want to encourage you to take a long, hard, not hard, that's not the right word, my apologies, a long contemplative look at your relationship with money, at the conversations you have around money with yourself, with your kids, with your partner, with your friends, and soften all of that and get honest. I think we live in a time where honesty and truth and being real will bring great rewards. It always has, but we've been conditioned to think that Maybe real and honest is not the best way through. But I think we're seeing now for sure in the world that, in fact, that is true. Being honest and being real has great rewards and brings such expansive potential and beauty into your life. God bless. Get real. Much love and bye for now.